Christ Center is a church where the word is preached, where disciples are made, where we reach out and where God is worshipped and where we have enriching fellowship. Welcome to Christ Center, experiencing Christ, transforming lives. The Bible says, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to preaching and to teaching. May the word of God come alive as you listen to his word. Welcome to today's It's Easter Sunday and the Lord is risen. The tomb is empty and we want to learn from scripture this morning what the Lord is saying to us. So please do turn with me to John chapter 20 and we'll read from verse 1. We divide this into three. And the first part we are going to read is I'm calling it Mary, Peter, and John go to the tomb. Verse 1, let's read together. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been moved from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple that Jesus loved and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple had trained Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked, at the, looked in at the strips of linen lying there but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had risen from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. An interesting episode. It's Sunday early in the morning. It's still dark. And Mary Magdalene decides to go to the tomb. She goes to the tomb, but to her surprise, she finds that the stone at the entrance has been rolled. She came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, of course, that is John, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Mary has come back and is giving this news. And on hearing this news, Peter and John start right away to go to the tomb. And they are running, they are running, and it looks like John was uh, a faster runner than Peter. So John reaches the tomb first. Peter is following him back. Now, when John reached the tomb, he looked in. The stone, of course, wasn't there. It was rolled uh, beside the, the, the entrance. He looks inside the tomb. And he sees that the strips of linen are lying there. I don't know what held him back, but the Bible records that he did not go in. I can speculate that perhaps he was too shocked to believe that the body was actually missing. So within no time, Peter has arrived. Peter, being the person he is, goes into the tomb and he sees that the strips of linen are actually lying there and the cloth that was around Jesus' head is also lying there and they are folded and they are separate from each other. So Peter is now inside the tomb. Now, John gathers the courage now and goes inside. Then the Bible tells us in verse 8, he saw and believed. He saw and believed. <laughs> now, the Bible is keen to 
remind us at this point in verse 9 that they still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Now, do you know who these people are? Peter, John, Mary Magdalene. These were the people that were always around Jesus. When Jesus was predicting his death for the first time, second time, third time, they were there with him. But they did not understand from scripture, from the prophecies that had been given by the prophets of old. They hadn't yet understood that Jesus was to rise from the dead. And when these things are unfolding, I'm sure they are shocked. That's why the Bible is keen to remind us, it's actually in brackets in my Bible, that they still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Verse 10, then the disciples went back to their homes. I'm sure this was too much to take in. They just went back to their homes. I don't know what they were doing, but it must have been a difficult time for them. It was just two days ago. Jesus Christ, betrayed, arrested, is taken to, uh, to the courts, he's judged and his verdict is given, he's flogged, he is hung on a cross, he's dead, he's buried. Now, on the third day, they come here and his body is missing. What would you make of this if it were you? Now, just hold on there. Let's move to the second part of this text. The second part I'm calling, Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Let me read for you verse 11. Now, Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And so two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned Round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Again, very captivating. Mary Magdalene, remember Peter and John had already gone back home. Now Mary Magdalene is still here. She is mourning, she is crying. The Bible says that in verse 11, Mary stood outside the tomb crying. She's mourning the death of her Lord. She's mourning the fact that his body is now missing. She doesn't know where the body is. And so she goes into the tomb and finds two angels. These two angels, one is seated on this one, one end, and the other one is seated on this other end. And then they ask her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my, Lord's, my Lord away. Now she's responding to them. And then it goes on and on. Now at that time, of course Jesus is already risen. And Jesus is right there with her. 
When Jesus is speaking to her, she is thinking that Jesus is actually the gardener. And she tells Jesus, not knowing that it was Jesus, she tells Jesus, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Now, at that point, Mary did not want to know. All she wanted is my, the body of my Lord needs to come back. I need to take care of this body. Bring this body back. I need it. But the Lord Jesus gave her a pleasant surprise. Listen to verse 16. Mary, this is Jesus saying to her. Now then she turns towards him and cries out in Aramaic, Rabboni! Rabboni! Which means teacher. So she now discovers that it is actually Jesus who is speaking to her. I'm sure she was joyous. But Jesus had a message for her. Do not Hold on to me. Let me go. I have finished what I was doing on earth. Let me go. <laughs> Fully overjoyed. And then she goes back to the disciples and gives the news. And when she gets there, the first thing she says is that, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. And the Lord has told me a number of things. And then she, of course, reports what the Lord had told her. So there's great joy there. Now, the third part of this text, verse 19 to 23, and I'm calling that a lockdown surprise. These people are in lockdown and there's a surprise for them. Listen, verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came in and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Verse 21. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Lord has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. So, these people are locked down. And they are locked down for fear of the Jews. Remember, it is the Jews that had killed their Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. And they were fearing that anything could happen to them. So, they are in a situation of a lockdown, just as we are locked down now because of coronavirus. And it is in that situation that Jesus appears to them. And he appears with one strong message. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. He tells them that twice. Peace be with you. Friends, when, when I start reading this, I get quite excited. But I just want to draw two lessons from this. And the first one is that Jesus is reason. Now, he died on Friday, but now, and 2,000 years ago, he is risen, and he's seated on the right-hand side of the Father. He will come back in glory, and he will take those that belong to him. Jesus is no longer defeated, and it is in that victory that you and I are walking in. The risen Christ. Will you walk with your head held high? Because Jesus is risen on this Easter Sunday. The second thing and the last is, is a strong message that Jesus is giving us. Peace be with you. You are on lockdown like his disciples were, but peace be with you. May you experience the peace of God during this time and in the days to come. Peace be with you. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for all those that we have been together with as they are listening to this word today. We thank you because we find reassurance in your word that on this Easter Sunday, you are alive. The tomb is indeed empty. Mary Magdalene went in 
Peter, John went in and they found that the body was no longer there. There were only the linens and two angels that were there. Because Jesus is alive. And he's alive 2,000 years ago. He's alive today and he will continue to be alive. Lord, will you reign in our hearts? Will you reign your peace that you minister to us this morning? Will you reign that peace in our hearts? Because you are Lord over everything. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord richly bless you. Amen. Christ Center is a church where the word is preached. A church where disciples are made. A church where we reach out. A church where God is worshipped. A church where we have enriching fellowship. Welcome to Christ Center. Experiencing Christ, transforming lives. lives.